I know that uh, for myself, uh, I actually started doing shellfish for one patrol and constable work in the town of Stu Bend in 1972. So I've been in it a while. Uh, I've been a full-time law enforcement officer and chief of police in the town of Millbridge now for 19 years, and I've been doing shellfish in Millbridge since 97 as well. When I took the position in Millbridge as a law enforcement officer, they was they decided to bring their shellfish ordinance back, and they knew that I had been a shellfish one, so they asked me to get on board. I did that, and as part of what I do, I'm a lot different than probably everybody else on this group, uh, because I'm also the town manager and everything else in town. <laughs> so I actually help run all the shellfish meetings. Uh, I help do all the minutes. I have actually do all the grants and so forth with town over it. So. I have been responsible for doing code enforcement stuff as well, so I have, which I'm very proud of, have cleaned up 50 failing sewer systems along the shore, which has opened up a lot of clam flats for us. And in dollars, that is right around $150,000 that I was able to bring into town just to clean those sewer systems up. I also oversee our sewer plant in town, which I make certain that we keep everything right to the maximum so that we meet all requirements. I also do about everything in town that you can imagine <laughs> to help ensure that all of our clam diggers uh, get the jobs that they need to and that they follow the law. That's one of my primary goals is to make certain that everybody is legal. So that's just a little bit about me. While I do a little bit <laughs> I have actually had to plow snow during the winter because my plow guys was out sick and one died one month. So. Uh, my name is Dan Devereaux, like Cole said. I work for the town of Brunswick. I've worked for the town of Brunswick since 1997. Um, I was first hired on um, by the town of Harpswell in 1995. Um, I didn't know much about the clam world until, uh, until then. Um, I got hired, a funny story, uh, went into a board of selectmen in the town of Harpswell and filled out the application and they said, well, you're big enough to do the job. So they slapped a tin badge and a 357 that was about that long, I swear. And um, that's how I got started. Um, since then, um, it's evolved. Um, I'm self-educated. I'm not a scientist, not a biologist. I find I'm very interested in that stuff, um, following it. Um, I run the harbor management program for the town of Brunswick as well as the shellfish program, as well as doing some law enforcement, uh, street law enforcement. So we stay busy um, running all those different uh, programs. Uh, we do the conservation program. I've got a, a, a nice uh, warden that works for me, Paul Plummer. Um, helps us out on the enforcement end. Um, we do a lot of assessment work, a lot of monitoring work. Um, up until 2007, the town of Brunswick had somebody that was designated to do that, um, and he was, they were called the natural resource planner, but due to budget, budget uh, cuts, we lost that position, so the trickle-down effect um, was that it didn't get done, or someone like me who's gullible and willing to take on those additional responsibilities just steps up and does it. Um, so I've been doing it since then. Like Lewis, um, you know, we work on trying to identify uh, failing septic systems, pollution sources. We just did an extensive um, uh, watershed uh, monitoring plan in the backside of the base, um, NASB, which is now gone. Um, but we do all different kinds of work, um, really focused on, on the estuaries. Um, in terms of the health of the estuaries and not necessarily of the clams. Um, we believe firmly in the town of Brunswick um, that sub shellfish have a tremendous ecological value um, and that's why we, um, one of the major reasons that we are able to get funding and other uh, types of support for the program is because we tap more than just um, the shellfish harvesters in the clamming industry. Um, we tap our residents, we tap, tap our environmentalists, we tap our conservationists. Um, 
in terms of including them in the conversation. Um, we add them to our uh, um, Marine Resource Board, um, which I staff, and that's essentially the management team that um, directs me on what they would like to have done on the flats and what they'd like to see done. Um, in terms of directing that board, sometimes they can go really astray. Um, just recently, we were really focused on aquaculture, especially since the, we see the trends and the declines in the, in the clamming industry, particularly the soft shell clamming industry. We have a little bit of a silver lining in the town of Brunswick. Um, we have a, 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 a robust uh, whole hog resource. Um, they are both intertidal and subtitle, uh, so so we're lucky in terms of that. Um, Brunswick's always been a very fortunate town. I don't know whether it's the hydrographics um, in which it sits in northern Casco Bay, um, but, uh, but we've been uh, we catch natural set a lot uh, uh, in that town, um, and uh, just recently, within the last two or three years, we've had some incredible sets. Uh, and our bays are looking healthier than they have in many, many, many years since when we first started. Um, that's not to say that uh, we don't have massive amounts of what everybody's talked about today, ribbon worms, green crabs that we have to deal with. Um, we monitor the green crab trapping program, which we have harvesters get conservation credit for green crab, green crab trapping. Somebody has to track all this stuff. Somebody has to file all the paperwork. Somebody has to do the Army Corps engineers' permits to lay the netting down on the, on the, on the flats and to put up fences and stuff like that. And that usually falls under my purview. So um, that's a little bit of what I do um, for the shellfish management program. I also uh, run the harbor management program, which is something uh, totally different and, and has much more um, is much more convoluted than even uh, with the shellfish program. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Byron. Good afternoon, uh, my name is Bob Byron, uh, as Cole said, I, I came from uh, the state police, so uh, my goal, uh, I guess my goal when I took this job four years ago, was I came into a town that is very different than um, I think what Dan deals with and what uh, Lewis deals with. We have a code enforcement officer, we have all the people in place to do all the things that, that Lewis does, so I'm able to focus on being the harbor master and the shellfish warden. And one of the things I noticed fairly quickly was we had a very dysfunctional, as a town, we had a very dysfunctional relationship with the Department of Marine Resources. Um, we had a very dysfunctional relationship with the town councilors who um, basically didn't give a lot of credibility to our shellfish committee. So my goal was to rebuild that reputation of the shellfish committee to uh, I sat back for about six months and watched how it worked. And there wasn't a lot of work getting done. There was a lot of complaining about the numbers being down, about the you know, residents in town digging. Um, we don't have a big commercial base. We do have a large uh, recreational base, which I think is very important for the town of Yama. I think it's part of our heritage. Um, so basically what I've focused on the last four years is rebuilding that reputation uh, with Cole's assistance and Pete Thayer's assistance and Terry Dane's assistance. I think um, when somebody calls from the town of Yarmouth now, maybe we don't get that big cringe on the other end of the phone. Um, we've actually been able to put a conservation program in place which was missing uh, for several reasons. One being the Department of Labor issue, we've resolved that uh, with the assistance of uh, Hopswell and several of the other towns. We do the same thing, we give relief if people participate in a conservation program towards their license fee. But um, the reputation has come back with the town councilors. I've had shellfish uh, committee members make presentations to the town council. Um, and over time, that has improved. So I think Yarmouth has the same issues that most towns on the coast have, is we have seen a huge decline. Um, Cole and I talked about it yesterday. Huge decline in our landing numbers um, for multiple reasons. We are one of the few towns that allow depuration, um, which is another conflict that I deal with with our commercial diggers and the depuration companies. Uh, so far, uh, I think we've mended some of those fences, and um, I've gleaned a lot of information from Dan because he's much more well versed in this uh, in these processes than I am, and I am all in favor of not reinventing the wheel. So um, 
that's been my primary goal is just to reestablish our reputation with again DMR and the, and the town itself. Okay. okay, as it was mentioned, I was um, in my former life of started Marine Patrol in 1979. I did a stint which was strictly enforcement, and the town of Gooseboro came to me when the shellfish warden they had decided he was no longer going to do it, and I was asked to to put it the way some people spoke. Gooseboro was the wild, wild west. The meetings were very dysfunctional. Uh, they couldn't accomplish anything. Um, being the type of person I was, I said that I would accept the challenge, and it was a little bit of a challenge, but um, Bride has been to a few of my meetings, and she said she's seen changes, and the, and the uh, biologists have seen changes. It wasn't all me. Um, being from law enforcement, I'm kind of um, firm. It's like these gentlemen are. They've all got law enforcement backgrounds. We go in, we're going to take care of business. Um, it was mentioned earlier that I convinced the diggers with a little bit of re reluctance and a little bit of discussion, actually, I'm going to say a little, but it was actually a lot, to implement the first maximum size clam of four inches for a maximum size clam. And I told Heidi a little earlier on to stand by to stand by because I'm going to try to get them to reduce it again. Um, I think it's important. Um, I'm not a scientist. I rely um, highly um, on Heidi's advice to in direction in looking at what's worked in other towns because it doesn't necessarily work in Gooseboro because it works on Brunswick or Freeport or Movers or whatever. But you've got to be open to the ideas and willing to try it. Um, so the guys that finally got on the board, they were willing to do something. There was a, a bunch of a group of guys that wanted to do something and improve the industry and then we have the group of guys that wanted to go to work and didn't want to do anything. They just wanted to dig their bushel or two plans a day and not do anything to help the resource. We have a tremendous green crab problem. So after a little bit of discussion and talking about green crabs, I went and with my committee I got approval from the selectmen after going up. I had a small trap built and each one and each one of my diggers with two one or two traps that they take and set during the tide and they harvest the green trap uh, crabs and we're on a special permit um, to capture those crabs, they bring them in. The biggest problem we had was finding a place to take care of them when they brought them in. Had a couple of harvesters that didn't do it all summer, but they got about 65 bushel of green crabs apiece. Just setting these traps that are only two feet long, about a nine inches high and a foot wide, um, and they just carry them out, set them, pick them up when they come back. So we I have encouraged some of those guys and the, the naysayers that didn't want to bother with it, when I asked about how many green crabs at the last meeting, so I could tell Hannah, because I'm under a special permit, approximately how many green crabs were absent in the town of Gooseboro, and how many crabs, how much time it actually took, some of the other guys decided to buy into it. So I've got more guys next year that have decided to take one or two of these traps and try it. Um, so I am not, I run the meetings, <clears throat> I'm definitely, not the leader, but on the suggestion box to the people that want to listen. And there, as I said, there is a core group that will listen, and they're accepting the ideas. And they, we don't accept them all, but they discuss it. And we're moving forward in the town. Okay, so One of the other things that I'd like to point out is uh, we all do so many different things for our communities, each one of us. Uh, I actually, one of the things I started doing ages ago was when I got on, when we really started getting into doing conservation measures, to show them that I was committed to helping them, even though I don't live in Millbridge, I actually go out and dig clams and help brush and help net right alongside of them, which I know my counterparts do the same thing. And, that shows them that we're not just the enforcement now. We are a big component and support everything they're doing and we'll work beside them to help them do it. I, I, just to, to expound upon that, I think the enforcement part is, is very important. Um, in terms of if you have a management plan, it has to be enforced. Um, but there's, there's so much more um, involved in shellfish management and in the shellfish industry. Um, and like Lewis just said, part of that is gaining the respect of the harvesters within your community. 
and, and if they respect you, then you might be able to um, guide them or lead them in a direction. Uh, and that's what we do on our committee is we don't we we plant ideas and kind of let them run with it. Um, for instance, the, the entire aquaculture idea. Um, you know, that's a controversial idea. Uh, it, it, it's 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 highly contentious uh, in Freeport um, and in other towns. Um, prior to planting that idea, um, we contacted probably three or four hundred different landowners that I know personally because I walked across their property for the last 20 years to check flats. And we talked to them and we explained to them the ecological value of having clams in the flats. Um, to the water quality so they can swim, so they can fish, um, so they can have vegetation there. Um, and uh, we, it's, it's received pretty well in the town of Brunswick. We have, I think, one of the few, um, we will have one of the few uh, intertidal leases with a commercial harvester planting and, and growing clams. Um, so, I mean, with no contention from the riparian landowners. Um, so it's, it's important, um, enforcement is important, um, yes, but uh, there are a lot of other dynamics and I think all of my colleagues that sit at the table will agree. Um, and sometimes those, they're, they're very dynamic and they change uh, from one to the other.